Welcome back to another video. We are going to be doing an early prediction and breakdown for the May 13th fight night main event of Jarzino Rosenstrike versus Jelton Almeida. This fight should be pretty interesting. We have Jelton Almeida coming up inside that heavyweight division. Obviously, Jarzino Rosenstrike kind of just hanging in there in the heavyweight division. We'll see what happens here. Big step up in competition for Jelton Almeida off of some of the little guys that he's been taking out. This is a pretty big step up. Decent name in Jarzino Rosenstrike, and this will be five rounds. So, very big step up. I'm going to be going and breaking down how these guys match up physically and how I think the fight will go. So without further ado, let's get right into the breakdown. We have Jarzino Rosenstrike and Jelton Almeida. Jarzino Rosenstrike 13 and 4, Jelton Almeida 18 and 2. So obviously a little bit more, weirdly enough, a little bit more experience for Jelton Almeida. I think Jarzino Rosenstrike definitely has a little bit more experience inside the UFC against the top competition. So he does kind of have the edge there. He is three years older than Jelton Almeida. Jelton Almeida will be one inch taller. Biggie boy, Biggie boy. I, I want to call him Biggie boy so badly. I don't know why. It just goes uh, goes off the tongue a little bit better than Jarzino Rosenstrike. But Rosenstrike weighs 261 and a half pounds in the heavyweight division. So really close to that heavyweight limit. Jelton Almeida weighs 232 pounds. There's a picture of him and Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira actually looked bigger than him. So he's a pretty small guy relatively for the heavyweight division, but he's just super strong and just his style works so well in there for some reason. I don't know. I don't know how he's so strong. He's able to pick up some of these big dudes, but for reach advantage, Jelton Almeida will have a one inch reach advantage and will have a two and a half inch leg reach advantage for Jarzino Rosenstrike. His last fight was a win against Chris Dawkins, who everyone's beating. Beat him by KO, I believe, is like in a few seconds at the beginning of the round. Uh, lost to Alexander Volkov by KO. Uh, I believe he did lose to Curtis Blades by decision. Also got out-wrestled in that matchup and out-grappled, especially as the fight kept going on because he was getting tired and things like that. So, And then he also lost, or I'm sorry, beat Augusto Sakai by KO and then lost to Cyril Gaon by decision. A very boring decision, by the way. Horrible fight night main event there because... Jarzino Rosenstrike is just ends up ends up just being patient sometimes. Uh, for Jelton Almeida, his last fight was a win over Shamil Abdurakimov by KO ground and pound. Uh, Anton Turkalj before that, or Anton Turkali by submission. Uh, Parker Porter by submission, rear naked choke, Danilo Marquez by KO, and on the contender series beat Nasrudin Nasrudinov. So just by that name there, you can tell he's probably a very good wrestler and grappler just in general. Let's be real. And that was on the Contender Series too. So that was a very impressive win there. Out wrestling, out grappling some of these high level wrestlers. Uh, 10 and 2 Nasrudin. Nasrudinov, by the way. Beating some decent guys on his way up. But yeah, for this matchup, I'm going to go with Jilton Almeida. I think he does get this one done in like round one or two. Maybe Jorzino Rosenstrike puts up a decent fight in the first round. And then ends up going to the second round, just defensively aware, just not getting TKO'd on the ground or submitted, just being very defensive on the ground. But I do think Jelton Almeida definitely won't gets this one to the ground. Maybe he stands on the feet a little bit more. The issue with Jarzino Rosenstrike a lot in this matchup and his previous matchups is that he's super patient on the feet. He just looks always just looks so hesitant standing up. Like he's just he's just like it looks like he's super worried and just doesn't want to throw a punch. Like I just want him to if he had that confidence and I don't even, I don't want to say belief in himself, but if he had the confidence just to keep going, I think he could really knock some of these guys out. But I do think Joe Town made a hash shown off a little bit of a stand up, like some of these teeps to the body, keeps a good distance, but then just goes in for a takedown. I, I'll see the same thing here for Joe Town made. I think he does get the takedown. Curtis Blades, especially over the three rounds that he fought, Derzina Rosenstrike was able to get the takedowns a lot easier as the fight went on. So, Maybe if we see the test of Jilton Almeida's cardio here, because he is the smaller fighter here, but he, he does use a lot of uh, muscle and does a lot just to get some of these takedowns, especially using picking up these guys and taking them down. We'll, we'll see how he takes uh, Darzino Rosenstrike down in this one, but maybe his cardio might be a little bit better in this one over time. So who knows? But I am going to go with Jilton Almeida. I think uh, it's kind of iffy on TKO versus submission here because he does kind of pin these guys to the ground and then finishes them there just going off of the topology stats here you have he has five tkos in the first round and two tkos in the second round by submission he has eight subs in the first round and three subs in the second round yeah it's, it's kind of a toss-up there topology in general is having 
Jilton Almeida winning by 67% by submission. So they're saying 87% for Jilton Almeida in general, but 67% by submission and 23% by TKO. But I think he just gets him down. I don't know how he finishes him. Maybe he does get a sub here, but I think it'll probably be more by TKO. The only issue with that is that Jersey Erosion Strike is a bigger dude, so maybe he's going to be able to move him around a little bit more and not stay stationary on the ground to where you'll have a jail 10 Almeida just kind of pinning him there and just unloading punches on him. But I do think jail 10 Almeida does get him to the ground, does pin him there. Maybe he does roll over to a submission like a rear naked choke or something like that. But I'm going to go jail 10 Almeida in one or two. I think one late one, I think a lot of the times he does finish these guys by what TKO or submission in the late first round. Shamil Abdurakhimov, two minutes and two minutes and 50 seconds in round two. So that was different for him, especially recently. But before that, Anton Turkali, late first round. Parker Porter, late first round. Let's see. Um, these are grappling competitions. Danilo Marquez, um, second half of the first round. Let's see. Early second round for Nasrudin and Nasrudinov on the Contender Series. And I believe those are the only few round two finishes he does have. So a lot of the times he does finish either on the ground by punches or um by submission in that later half of the first round or early second round so either way i think he does get this one done in the later first round maybe by submission after he does unload some punches on rosenstrike and rosenstrike has to like flip over or something and just locks in a a fast little um rear naked choke or something like that but i do think he gets it done here uh, yeah i think this will be a very good win for Jar i'm sorry not for jarzine or rosenstrike i don't know why i want to say his name so much but for jail to Almeida, i think he's going to be a little move up pretty easily through this division over some of these unskilled heavyweight uh fighters in general they're not very good at wrestling as of course when he goes up there we're probably gonna have to see a little bit more of a stand-up but i think jilton almeida gets this one done on the ground by submission late first but it could be ground and pound tko at this point but i do have jilton almeida i hope you guys enjoy the video let me know who you guys think wins in the comments down below and i'll see you guys next time